Welcome to Dr. T Math. I hope that you enjoy the video. In this video, we are going to study three problems for vector valued parametric curves in a three dimensional space using differential and integral calculus in order to solve these three problems. Treating the vector value function as a position, we can differentiate it once to find the velocity, twice to find the acceleration component wise. Then we can understand that the magnitude of the velocity is a speed, and we can decompose a velocity vector into a direction and a speed using vector decomposition techniques. We'll also see how to solve an initial value problem, which is essentially a differential equation together with an initial condition by term by term integration and using the initial condition to solve for the constants of integration. Let's get started. In vector calculus, a very useful way to describe a three-dimensional curve is by treating it as a vector value function, r of t, in terms of a parametric coordinate in time. This type of description will study from the vector in standard position pointing at a point along the curve at a specified time, a vector r of t. As this vector in standard position tracks coordinates, it maps a curve in space with a given direction in time. It turns out that using calculus, one can study several properties of curves like this in a vector value form. In this example, we will study basic calculus techniques for how to differentiate and integrate vector value functions. In this framework, our vector value function will take on a form x of ti plus y of tj plus z of t k. And what we'll need to do when differentiating and integrating functions in this vector value form is differentiating and integrating component-wise and keeping track of constants of integration in each dimensional component. And that's really the trick. In principle, just differentiating and integrating component-wise is conceptually the new thing that's being added. So in this first problem, we're given a position function defined as r of t is equal to 2 cosine t in the i-coordinate, 3 sine t in the j-coordinate, and 4 t in the k-coordinate. This is an x-direction, a y-direction, and a z-direction, and is associated with a position function and also with a vector in R3 defined by this R of t. So the particle position defined by the vector value function R of t, 2 cosine ti plus 3 sine tj plus 4 tk is given. And now to find the velocity and acceleration, we do the normal thing we do in Newtonian physics, which is the velocity is the derivative and the acceleration is the second derivative. So here we have that the derivative in time is a component-wise derivative. So you can write this as minus 2 sine t in the i component, 3 cosine t in the j component, and 4 in the k component. And this, of course, could be written out in a vector form like this, minus 2 sine ti plus 3 cosine tj plus 4k. We could also compute the magnitude of the velocity vector, which would be equal to the speed, and that would be the square root of the sum of the squares of each of the terms. So the i component squared plus the j component squared plus the k component squared. So this is how we compute a vector magnitude. In this case, it would be 4 sine squared t plus 9 cosine squared t plus 16. And then this would be the speed for each value of t. The acceleration, or second derivative, is also computed component-wise. So in this case, the derivative of the x component is minus 2 cosine t. The derivative of the y component is minus 3 sine t. And the derivative of the z component is 0. In a vector notation, we might just choose to omit the k component if we were writing it out in this form. 2 cosine ti minus 3 sine tj, and then just leave off the k component, which would be plus 0 times k. So this is the position, velocity, speed, acceleration. The third derivative would be the jerk. And the fourth derivative, we would call that snap. And actually the fifth derivative is crackle, and the sixth derivative I think is pop. 
snap, crackle, pop. Continuing this example with the same position function, we might be asked a question like find the particle's speed and direction of motion at t equals pi over 2. So in this case, we recall that the velocity vector function, r prime of t, is minus 2 sine t, comma 3 cosine t, comma 4 in the i, j, and k components respectively. Then if we evaluate this derivative at pi over 2, that should give us the value of our velocity function evaluated at pi over 2. This vector will be minus 2 sine pi over 2, comma 3 cosine pi over 2 in the j coordinate, and 4 in the k coordinate. What are the values of sine and cosine of pi over 2? Well, let's just make a brief recall that cosine function looks like this, from 0 to 2 pi, going between 1 and negative 1, and sine function looks like this for one period. So at pi over 2, our key points are these points, making the sine value 1 and the cosine value 0. So that makes the value of our velocity function at pi over 2 minus 2, 0, and 4. This is the vector, which we call velocity, evaluated at pi over 2. This vector, minus 2i plus 0j plus 4k, can be split up into a magnitude and a direction by writing it in the usual fashion. If I have a vector v, and I want to split it into a magnitude and a direction, I can take a normalization of the vector and multiply by the same value. This is multiplication and division by the same quantity of constant in this case, so we call this multiplication by 1. Sometimes this has the, the name of mathematician's favorite trick, multiplication and division by the same term. This is a direction, and it is a unit vector, and this one is a magnitude of the vector, which we call, in this case, speed, if it's associated with a magnitude of a velocity vector. So, in this case, um, we would have r prime of pi over 2 is equal to minus 2, 0, 4, divided by the magnitude of this vector, minus 2 squared plus 0 squared plus 4 squared times the same magnitude of this vector, which is times the square root of 4 plus 16, which is square root of 20. And so in this case, the vector has a direction, 1 over square root of 20, times negative 2, 0, 4, and it has a magnitude, or speed, square root of 20. So this quantity here, we would call it the direction, and it is unit length, and this quantity here, we would call it the speed. So we could say the direction is negative 2 over root 20 i plus 4 over root 20 k. And the particle's speed is square root 20. There are no units in this problem, so we can leave that, that consideration off. But if it was a physics problem, for example, and our position function was given in terms of some units, then we would want to be careful to include units with the speed, and we wouldn't have to include units with the direction. It would be a dimensionless quantity. In our final example, we're going to solve an initial value problem by integration. So we have a, essentially a velocity function defined in terms of a vector parametric form, and we want to integrate our velocity in order to find our position. And then we'll use our given initial condition to find our constants of integration. So essentially, we have a differential equation together with an initial condition, and sometimes this is called an IVP, or an initial value problem. First, we integrate to find the general solution. R of t equals the integral of dr dt dt. This is a component-wise integral, which will look like the integral of minus ti minus tj minus tk dt. This then can be integrated term by term into the form minus t squared over 2 plus c1i plus minus t squared over 2 plus c2j plus minus t2 squared t squared over 2 plus c3k. 
Notice we basically just integrate term by term in the usual fashion, but we must pick up three separate constants of integration. This is called the general solution. And now we want to use our initial condition, r0 equals 1, 2, 3, which is 1 times i plus 2 times j plus 3 times k, in order to find the three constants of integration. So our initial condition will be used to find the constants of integration. Plugging r of 0 into this equation for r of t then gives r of 0 equals minus 0 squared over 2 plus c1i plus minus 0 squared over 2 plus c2j plus minus 0 squared over 2 plus c3k. And we know that r0 equals 1, 2, 3. In order that the i term equals the i term here, this implies that c1 equals 1, c2 equals 2, and c3 equals 3. Hence, c1 equals 1, c2 equals 2, and c3 is equal to 3, in order that each of these terms should match r0 from the initial condition. Thus, what we call the particular solution, the particular solution, which is the general solution where we've solved for the constants of integration using the initial condition, is now r of t is equal to minus t squared over 2 plus 1 in the i direction, plus minus t squared over 2 plus 2 in the j direction, plus minus t squared over 2 plus 3 in the k direction, and this would be the particular solution to the initial value problem, and this is typically the answer that we're trying to get.